Steel bikes are heavy, steel bikes aren't as stiff as other materials, and steel bikes are slow. These and other many misconceptions plague the world of steel bikes. What's up? I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter. Be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and consider hitting the like button and subscribing so YouTube knows to recommend you more fixed gear videos. Great bikes can be designed and made out of various materials. And just because a bike is made out of a certain material doesn't make it better or worse than another material. But rather how the bike builders and designers use the materials to the best advantage is what matters the most. This is the case for steel bikes. And to learn in depth about steel tubing, here's my video that I did with Wobby Cycles where we explained all the details that go into steel tubing and what makes a bike incredibly fun to ride. Weight is the most common objection against riding steel bikes because it is true that steel bikes tend to be a little bit heavier than bikes made out of other materials. But the reputation that steel has for being heavy and slow is unreasonable for two reasons. Number one, steel is the oldest material that bikes are made out of and also the most popular material that bikes are made out of. Meaning there's a huge range in the quality of steel. There's a lot of really cheap heavy stuff, but at the same time, there's also a lot of high-end stuff where a lot of exciting innovations are happening with steel. But a lot of times people like to focus on the cheap low-end stuff that they see the most while ignoring the high-end stuff. Secondly, the weight of your frame set in a vacuum really doesn't matter all that much. The frame is about 20% of a bike's weight, and it's even less significant when you take into account the weight of the entire bike system. That is the bike, the rider, and the stuff you're carrying. For instance, I weigh about 165 pounds. The stuff I carry with me on a daily basis weighs about 10 pounds in a messenger bag, and my bike weighs about 19 pounds. I actually don't know the exact weight of my bike with my current setup because it actually doesn't matter all that much. But if you take all this into account, the frame set weighs about 6.3 pounds. So out of this 194 pound system, that's about 3.2% of this entire bike rider systems weight. Aluminum, carbon, and titanium frame sets may be a pound or so lighter. Frame weight in a vacuum is insignificant when you take into account the entire bike and rider system. You are the engine of your bike. If you want to go as fast as possible on the bike, you need to improve yourself before these marginal differences on the bike matter. If you want to lose a pound or two to go faster, just go to the bathroom before your ride. Unless you're a top tier racer that gets free bikes on the regular, the one to two pound difference between a steel frame set or one made out of another material is insignificant. Even then, my steel bike with no carbon components is lighter than a lot of fixed gears with aluminum frames and full carbon forks. Where weight does matter to you and me is in its relation to strength and stiffness and how these three come together to form a bike's ride quality. Steel, especially on a relatively lightweight, well-designed frame set, is insanely fun to ride. High-end steel is known for its springy and lively ride quality that also feels buttery smooth to pedal. Very well-designed frame sets that balance stiffness, weight, and strength, like my Wabi Special, are said to plane. Planing is this feeling where the bike flexes with each pedal stroke and it synchronizes with your pedal stroke. It almost feels as though the bike is encouraging you to pedal more and to go even faster. And this experience of planing is the most fun that I've ever had on a bike. Steel is also famous for its bomb-proof durability. College students can happily ride around campus on their parents' steel bikes from the 70s, and some people ride steel bikes that were built before the war. And when I say the war, I'm referring to World War II. Steel is incredibly strong and ages well. Its strength makes it the most practical bike material for day-to-day -day use. It's harder to dent and fracture than frames made out of other popular materials, meaning you can lock it up at a bike rack without having to worry about a clumsy beach cruiser bumping into all the bikes, denting your frame set, and sacrificing the structural integrity of your bike. That durability also means that steel is the safest material to make a bike out of. It's crashable. Nobody plans on having a bike crash, but it happens to the best of us. So with a steel bike, if you have a minor crash, you can dust yourself off, 
pick your bike up and continue riding that bike. In a minor crash with an aluminum frame set, it's much more likely to dent. And whenever you crash carbon, that's a bad idea to continue riding as is without inspecting it because carbon fails catastrophically without warning and it can fracture beneath the surface, invisible to the naked eye. Steel ages well because it has a distinct fatigue limit, which is the stress level below a certain amount where an infinite number of loading cycles can be applied to it without causing the material to fail. Meaning as long as you don't ride a steel bike off a cliff or get hit by a car, you can theoretically ride the same steel bike forever. Compare that to aluminum frame sets where they will eventually fail with enough cycles and they get weaker the more you use them. Don't even get me started about the safety of carbon frame sets which can fail very unpredictably, especially when age is added to the equation. Because steel ages well, it also retains its value really well. There's tons of people who restore vintage steel bikes from the 70s and earlier and sell them to collectors and steel aficionados, many of whom build up and use these steel bikes on a regular basis. To further illustrate this point, would you willingly buy and ride on a regular basis an aluminum frame set from the 80s and carbon isn't that old yet but would you spend your hard-earned money on a carbon frame set built in the year 2000 or in the future would you purchase and ride a carbon frame set that's 50 years old hopefully the answer is no because you shouldn't and that's unreasonably dangerous. Steel is also incredibly versatile when it comes to looks. The looks of it can be anything from vintage and classy all the way up to modern. Many steel frame sets have steel lugs, which is the most elegant way to put a frame set together. And because steel is incredibly strong, many frame sets have small diameter elegant tubing and when you put these together it leads to a timeless and classic look and gives a lot of room for builders and designers to showcase high levels of craftsmanship but on the other end of the spectrum there's also lots of really cool looking modern steel bikes like with the large diameter tubings and triple triangle construction on the brake brake 17 low pro may break break rest in peace or on something like the wabi thunder which is an elegant steel frame set that can also fit all the racks and fenders that you could possibly want and bikes that are somewhere in between classic and modern styling like on the TIG welded frames and straight blade forks of the EAI bare knuckle and Toyo Godzilla frame sets may the lord also have mercy on their souls steel bikes are just the most beautiful bikes that I've seen and their versatility in how they can be built and styled and the purposes that they can be used for is really beautiful to me and even just looking at my elegance classy steel bike is enough to inspire me to throw my leg over and start riding it. Let me know in the comments what your favorite frame material to ride is and why. A Fixie Famous shout out to Ryan Witt and Stand Strong 108 for their contributions on Patreon to help make these fixed gear videos happen.